You are now listening to Out of the Blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. A uh, person I've been trying to get on since the, like one of the very first episodes I, I think I ever started doing. And we kept saying after the holidays and all this stuff and it kept falling through, but... It's Richard Dies. I'm not, here. not it's not what's happening. It's Richard. That's his last name. Is Dies. So tell me, Richard, what do you do? I guess professionally, I would professionally, say. Professionally, I work in a school cafeteria, and I'm also a waiter at a local restaurant. So lunch lady or lunch, lunch man? Lunch lady, Richard, and, and a server. Um, Okay, so you work in the school system doing that. Now, is that something you choose? No. Or is it like you kind of thrust it upon that It just was an opportunity that the job came up and I did it. Do you like working in the restaurant business? Just like around the the whole food thing in general? I did. It's getting to be, the restaurant thing's getting to be a little old now. I've done it for, since I was 19, and that's been quite a few years. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting over the restaurant part of it now. But the school, I do kind of like the school. I mean, it's got to be fun to do. You get to see uh, little kids and feed them that really good pizza and then feed them crap throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, a lot of the kids are fine. Do you ever um, try and go a little bit healthier? Like, actually, do you prepare the food and all that, or a lot of it is already pre-prepped? Like stuff Most of it is pre-prepped. The the menu itself is planned out by the the, um, food nutrition department at the Board of Education. And um, those are all like just stuff you just pull out of the freezer and kind of Basically, throw Basically, yeah. Do you ever get like, um, is there a certain food that you don't like serving to the kids sometimes you have to? Those fish things, I don't really like those. They kind of stink, I think. What fish things? Those, like the fish sandwiches, those frozen patties that are kind of like breaded. Oh, man. What about the cheeseburgers? I like the che- cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers are good. Cheeseburgers are, I mean, some of the stuff is really good. You probably and get all. all right. So the big problem for cafeteria people at every school that I've been <laughs> to was the kids taking an extra milk or something. Yeah, that's those milks are I good, don't man. Think that's a big deal. You those know, those milks are good. Then you get the kids that don't want the milk and they put the milk yeah. up on the thing for yeah, somebody else. Yeah. Oh, you put a chocolate milk up there. So if a little me. kid comes back and he wants, you know, an extra milk or an extra peach, you know, and I'm. Like, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what grade? Is, what grade is this around too? Kindergarten to third grade. Oh yeah, you got to be nice to little kids. Yeah, man. you're their inspiration. Like, yeah, Once you cool get into kids. like, you know, some kids only look forward to having lunch, mm-hmm. and some kids it's hard for them to even get a lunch. Like the kids that are on the paid school lunch yeah. program, that's a wonderful program. A it lot is. of people don't it is. understand. They're like, you know, make sure they get a fruit, a vegetable. That's a good thing too. But at the same time, you're giving a kid food, like. A lot of people don't understand what it's like to um, go through the day having stomach pains and stuff well, like that because exactly. your parents can't afford food. A lot of ki- people don't know what it's like not to have enough to eat, you know. Yeah. And um, at our school, we do a free free breakfast for every, all the kids get free breakfast. Is this at Buckingham or Shaw? Snow Hill Elementary, but they do it. Oh. At, I mean, they do it. At Buckingham was my. Now. That's where my childhood obesity came yeah. from. Was all those free breakfasts <laughs> we got in the morning. I'd eat breakfast in the morning, like a bagel, watch the Fresh Prince at home, then go in. They got sausage McMuffins, like the mm. ones you get from McDonald's or yeah, something, and yeah. a chocolate milk, exactly. and they're free, and they bring it to your class. I love the milk that used to sit out in front exactly. of the class. That's nuts. Exactly. And it's like it's a lot of stuff like that with school districts is very very beneficial because mm. I mean. There are kids out there that are, you know, parents are struggling, less they fortunate, are. that aren't able to afford either getting them their kids or even having the time because they have two jobs or something to get, you know, their kids ready and get their lunch packed and everything. And that's something a little kid should not have to worry about, you know, getting something to eat. Yeah. You know, I mean, they can't do it themselves, so they need... You know, that's something that needs to be provided. And you they know, don't even understand the, has to the aspect of it, just with like... A little, let's let's say a seven-year-old mm-hmm. worrying about his stomach hurting uncontrollably to where he can't focus in mm-hmm. class, and then wondering if his stomach's making such a lot of really? noise it's, it's that gonna be it's teased inter- or something. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be teased and interrupted in the class, which it exactly. brings in the whole aspect of the whole bullying. other thing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like we 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 totally ignore these things that happen and it's like if a, if the government first of all can't pay for school for kids to have a free lunch or something mm-hmm. then there's something wrong seriously really? with our government yeah. so that, that food is not i mean it's 
it's sort of expensive, but it's not that expensive. You know what I mean? Compared to like compared going to, to Chick Fil A exactly, and spending thirty dollars, exactly. yeah. But I mean, or buying candy or something. You know, yeah, it's, you're getting something. I mean, the food is it's all low sodium. It's it's not bad for you. Food. Yeah. You know, it's it's way healthier than it was when I was in school. Do they still serve sure. the cheese sticks? Mm-hmm. The mozzarella things. So mozzarella, I yeah. Michelle Obama took them out because well, I hated they're, her for the they're, longest they're time. They're breaded with the wheat breading now, and they're what? low sodium and low yeah. fat. Everything is wheat or low sodium or low fat or all that pizza? kind of stuff. The pizza pizza's cheese. on wheat crust. What's your favorite style of uh, school pizza? Because they have multiple styles. I, I like the, um, the big one, it's daddy. like half garlic bread. The, the, well, they're, they're called big daddy. They've got a lot of cheese on them, and they're kind of it looks like they thick. just cut half a loaf and then just. So yeah, yeah, that yeah. one's dope. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Um, they're, the thicker ones. They, they're not healthier, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the cheese on them. You know, low fat cheese and the the crust is uh, wheat. Damn crust. you, Michelle Obama! Because <laughs> those things were delicious. Those and those uncrustables. They're still, They're still pretty good, dude. You can't tell me you don't munch down on some uncrustables. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like the best thing in the world. I mean, yeah, oh my god. Oh, and sloppy Joe. They had really good sloppy Joe. You like their sloppy Joes? I do. I do. See now, you well, I keep a little hot sauce in the bag and put on there too. So that's, oh yeah, that helps. Oh, you get free lunch too. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're cooking it up too. That's funny because... Can't you have know, old farts going hungry either. Yeah. Do you, I mean, you, do you guys still... They serve cookies and stuff and that's They always snack, happening. yeah. But the, the ice cream, again, is, you know, low sugar, you know, reduced sugar and reduced salt and all that kind of stuff. We sell snacks. So, what's your all-time favorite thing you got? You said the... What was it? You said the all-time favorite thing you guys serve. You said you didn't like the fish I didn't sticks. like the fish sandwich. So, what's the... I guess probably the... Actually, the Sloppy Joe's probably... Oh, they have a new thing now called the pork barbecue sandwich. Like pulled pork barbecue. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty good. Because either that or the Sloppy Joe's are my favorite. So, dealing with the whole school and, you know, you kind of get a smile out of, you know, feeding the kids mm-hmm. and everything like that. Like, it's 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 it's, it's an easy-going job. It's nothing yes. like where you have to, you know, you don't have too many people, like, controlling of what you're doing. You're more like, you know, yeah. show up, feed the kids, go home. Yeah, you know, you're not giving them candy yeah. out of a van or anything. You're just... Yeah, you got, yeah, you got, there are certain regulations you got to follow and stuff, but it's not, not hard at all. And then um, when you go to your uh, waiter job, Mm -hmm. now that's serving tables and doing stuff like that. How pissed do you get? Like, you have to write down their menu and stuff. It depends on, you know, how many people. If it's like a four top, I can usually remember. Anything over four, I've got to write it down. Because Ellen DeGeneres has a uh, a joke where she hates the waiter that apparently has, like, a a photography memory or something like that. Where they're sitting there and there's, like, 20 people at the table. And your order? And your order? And your order? Do you ever... What's your... Worst thing, I guess you would say about being a waiter, like the one thing you always kind of dread if you go over to a table, and it sometimes happens. It's hard to tell. I mean, you know, a lot of people say it's um when they have a vegan person or someone that has a certain allergy. That's, that's not too bad, really. You know, I mean, it's just the attitude of the tables themselves. You know, sometimes you go over there and you know, hi, how you doing, and you don't even get acknowledged a lot of times. Sometimes they don't even look up and say hi to you. You know, or it's like, hi, how are you doing? Uh, I want a Coke. Okay, yeah. I'll get you a Coke. Then. Yeah, when they're rude. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it when the person comes and sits down at the booth. I, I never like that either. I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain professional standard you got to do. Kevin, you know? um, Kevin James, you know Kevin James yeah. from King Queens? King he has King. a funny bit. He says, um, when the guy sits down and goes, uh, so what can I get everybody? Well, you can get, you can get me a nice get the hell out of my booth. <laughs> like that type of stuff. Like, I understand, yeah. but I went, like, my friend's vegan and we've been to a restaurant together and it's it was a little difficult because he was, it's it's very hard, especially with someone that eats clean like mm-hmm. me and does yeah. stuff like that. We really don't go out to eat because we watch what we consume and it's like, He's got to watch everything. Like, is this cer- cooked a certain way? Yeah. It seems like the waiter's kind of like, really? Mm. What well, the restaurant I'm at now, the blacksmith, it's, it's, they, it's very easy for vegans. I mean, we're, we're geared more toward them than any other place I've ever worked. There's some vegan dishes on the menu, and we have meatless Mondays and stuff. Out of all the restaurants you've worked at, have you ever seen the movie Still Waiting? The server movie? 
With, um, with Dane Cook Dane and Ryan Cook. I've Reynolds. seen pieces of it. I've never okay. seen the whole do thing. Do they actually do that in the kitchen where they rub the food on the person's, on like the I've, junk or I've never butt seen or something it. like no, that? They spit not. in the person's garbage case. You've never, never been to a restaurant that's worth like that? that. You being no. honest with me? I ha- no, I've never seen have anything you ever close had, to that. Have you ever had the kind of the feeling of, you, is there any, oh, let me just say, is there any things in a restaurant that you can let me know on that's happened that you're like, that's not right? And, or do they do like a trick to the people where no, like, I no. have you ever watched Hell's Kitchen? Yeah. Yeah. And um, the woman's like, you know, the food's still cold, and they just shove it in the microwave instead of reheating the steak and or recooking it. They just heat it up in the microwave, and then the plate's hot, and it's mm-hmm. able to tell. You, you, you never I've been never, in a restaurant? No, never really said anything like that. I've never been anywhere where they've ever like actually done something to people's food. You know? Yeah. If you joke, kind of joke about it, you know, they you know what I'd like to do, but you never, I've never seen that. That's a big way. problem too. Mm-hmm. If they get caught doing that, you get I a have, big thing from yeah, like the food administration. I've never seen anything like that. What's the best thing about working at a restaurant? Just the, the people. You get to know. You get to experience the, everyone. The different people. You know, there's a lot of different people coming into the restaurant. There's a lot of different kind of people that work at the restaurant. You know, from all walks of life. Whether they're good ages. or bad. Yeah, I mean, but most people are good. You got to have a I sense think. of, um, I think, a, a, a kind of like goodness in the world, really, when you go... Um, when you're a server mm-hmm. or anything with an open communication job, yeah. just because you're dealing with so many different things. I mean, Most people are good people. I mean, I'm not saying you got to be the guy that wears like a million buttons on your shirt, yeah. like the ones you yeah, see at Applebee's yeah, or something. I, I, could, but I you, don't know if I can work like Applebee's or in a place like that. <laughs> I've been to, I've been to multiple restaurants, and like you know, when you go to a restaurant and the waiter's been like. What do you want? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they're all kind of giving you, like, a worse idea. You tell they're having a crappy day, but yeah. it's like, really, man? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think I've ever, you know, I'm always, you know, when I you know, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm Richard, and, you know, welcome to You're also going so for so. the tips, too. Well, that, you got Tipping yeah. is ridiculous. I don't think that should be a thing. But being, yeah, we, you, people are, go, they're going out to dinner. You know, you, you want to make it a nice experience yeah. for them. Well, tipping shouldn't, or lunch or tipping whatever. shouldn't be a thing. You guys should be getting paid enough to live yeah, off of, first I, of all, in I case you guys don't make tips. Because let's say you go in one night and then you don't have tips. Mm-hmm. You know, there's I nobody coming in. You're too, sitting there yeah. dead and you're barely making any money and you basically live off tips. Waiters and waitresses live off tips. Mm-hmm. That is a real thing. You guys, you know, you guys don't really get paid enough by the restaurant. And depending on where you go, like yeah. how the tip ratio is, some restaurants, um, if someone makes a certain amount of tips, they can keep all those tips. Mm-hmm. But usually, like some restaurants, they everybody puts all their tips together and splits them yeah, up. Yeah, I've, I've done both ways. Well, let's say that one person was a complete asshole the whole night and didn't get any tips and the next yeah. thing you know the other guy's getting, you know, bank and then they have to split their they tips. Have to split their tips, yeah. That's not fair. Yeah. I, I, I see both sides. Well, as, as with both stuff, I see both sides of everything. Well, you should get, you should be paid for the the, the goodness yeah. in, the, in your work. Like, you know, your work yeah. reflects what you do. If you mm-hmm. honestly have, or if you're a good waiter, if you're a good waitress, mm-hmm. oh. you know, you're going to have people that are gonna be like, I request this table. Mm-hmm. I remember going to my, uh, going out to eat with my grandparents all the time. Mm-hmm. We'd either go to Fridays, Applebee's, yeah. or wherever else my brother wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And um, we'd always, if we went to Applebee's, always sat in Steve's area. Always Steve. Oh, yeah. Always Steve. He actually looked looks like you he's bald he's you know but he always oh, knew what we wanted and before we even sit down what's up you know he knew my grandma by name knew my mm-hmm. grandfather by name and then he'd have our drinks already ready and then he goes are you are we getting the same thing or what, what are we doing and then yeah. like you know he was like real good and then he'd sit down and talk with us that we were okay with because we well, knew people, about you kn- him. no actually no no yeah there's a lot of yeah, well lot we of met him there but we in. just became like we, it's Friends like certain there, people yeah. their personality you just click to just drawn to some yeah. yeah some people just have a certain click of a person personality or something but he always brought me over my nachos and they stopped serving my nachos like look man he goes we don't serve that anymore what else do you want and I'm like really and he goes yeah I'm sorry I was like I tried to get the chef to make you something it's like you know that coolness factor to it and I'm sure my grandmom and grandpa tipped him well but it was like you know, when you are able to go to Applebee's and you only really go when the person's working there, yeah, that's something. That's, yeah. You know what I mean? That that even if you're not there that night and someone goes, that's, Oh, they were looking for you, you'd be like, you know, that probably gives you a good feeling, like, Yeah, I I'm in a crappy kind of job, you know. For some people it is like a kind of dead end thing. They're trying to get to something better. A lot of like waiters and waitresses, like my cousin, um, who busses tables and stuff, you know, he's trying to go to school for mm-hmm. chemical engineering and all this bio um genetic stuff mm-hmm. and it's like He's just doing that as a side gig. A lot of people that like serve tables, work at a coffee place, are just trying to get by into their, their what their passion what is down the road. Do, yeah. 
So I have to ask you, mm -hmm. what's your passion? I, I, when I first got out of high school, I was going to go to acting school. I was going to wait tables a few, you know, for a while. And so get exactly money. what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make money and then do that. But it just, it, it just never worked out. Never worked out. Somehow. Is that something you still want to pursue? I, I do, but I'm, I'm getting too old for that now. I just, I just never really knew how to go about it. Do you no. feel contempt in what you're doing now? Like, do you feel like this is what you can kind of do for the rest of your life, or do you want to? Mm. Do you have any dream like things down the road you you have planned in your head? I kind of did, but I mean, they're just. I just don't think the things I was going to do is going to be realized anymore. What is it? Tell me. Like writing, comedy writing, performing. Um, you still, still perform acting. though. I still, I'm still in a in a. What is that group. that you do? You do some music. I'm in a murder theory. mystery group. A murder we mystery. We do those. Group several times so you know different places around we had one a couple of weeks ago we got one tomorrow night you perform well, you know, explain murder to me what's murder mystery like it's like a show shakespeare inner no <laughs> it's like a interactive you're very interactive with the audience so kind of improv in a way yeah too. Oh, there's a lot you know there's a definite script but you're you can improv with the interacting with the guests so when yeah. you talk to talk to the other actors you have to stay on script because it's a certain you know you, you Vibe, got to, yeah, you got to set up the plot, yeah. what's happening, and people are following it and taking notes, and you know they want to figure out who the murderer was, and you know there's you know they spent who killed Jimmy money, who, That's it. Yeah, and that that that's, cool. that kind of feeds over your little bit of a and um, that helps, yeah. acting little <laughs> yeah thing. I mean, we all want to be famous, or we all yeah. want to be rich, or we all want to have some type of you know left leave a mark mm -hmm. that was my whole thing i want to leave a mark but i mean you've left mark whether it's with you know people everyone knowing who you are mm -hmm. or just a small group of people you've affected all of our lives hell you've known me since i was I a little kid you're a little teeny yeah and it's like you've left a mark on me you've left one on me too you know not in a bad way but <laughs> yeah I've always, I've always thought the world of you it was it was i still remember the one times we went to the berlin christmas parade back when <laughs> i was really little and my uh, my mom pulled us me and my brother out of the thing before we could break our boards for the karate part we were in the karate part of the thing I remember and we couldn't break our boards in public we were so bummed out and you grabbed the board from me you're like break it break it break it and i broke it right in front of you and yeah it was pre-cut but it was like you know that 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 uh, aspect i remember that was cool the first thing you did was make I, just remember that, I remember that like, look on your face yeah and i always remember coming down there and getting hot chocolate from like uh -huh. from the land of hotel and you know you took care of me when i was there like yeah. you know the the days i stayed you know sick you know yeah, whatever yeah, that was. You, <laughs> but like, you know, from um, <laughs> from school, and you know, my mom used to bring me into the Lantic Hotel because she couldn't leave me by myself at, at the house. And, you know, I would sit there. You'd be upstairs. I'd be up in one of the rooms watching and I'd come Scooby check Doo. on you and make yeah, sure you were come, all right. come check on me, bring me a little bit of food. And then I'd come down to the kitchen and you'd set me down on the, oh, the chef. Who was the chef Larry. at the time? Yeah, it would set me down on the counter. And like, they'd be, they were like a family too. Yeah, it was, it was. It was good. It was a nice well, little that's vibe. where I met your mom at. Atlantic Hotel. She's one of my best friends. Now tell me about some stories. Not about her in general, but like <laughs> some fun, crazy times you guys oh, had. Like, Because just... you're not, I mean, if, if I can say this and I'll edit it out if you really want me mm -hmm. to, but you're, you're, you know, you smoke weed and yeah. you do all that type of stuff too. And I heard some stories about eating edibles at work. You got to explain that to me. One time. Okay. We used to close down the Monday... It was Monday after Thanksgiving, and we had to decorate for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So we closed down this Monday. Everybody that worked there would show up, and we'd—I mean, we'd deck this place out. And another friend of ours, Wendell, Wendy, brought in some brownies. She said, "I made brownies for everybody, and um, you know, we can we can eat these whenever we want." And she was like, "Marlon, Richard, those two on the counter—that are yours. You eat those." I'm like, okay. So we, I had had no clue. So we eat these brownies. We're like, these are good, but they taste a little weird. Yeah, I ain't going to say nothing. They taste a little funny, though. Yeah, but they're good. So we ate them. So about a half an hour later, we're I'm on top of a ladder nailing some garland or something. And I'm like, Marla, I said, something's wrong. I don't feel right. <laughs> she said, yeah. I said, I, I, don't, I don't feel good either. Something, something's weird. I'm like, man. Like I'm feeling dizzy. They dose and, you. And then I get giggling and shit. And then all of a sudden you look up there to Wendy over there just giggling her ass off. I'm like, what did you do? She's like, you're high. When did you first dive into this 
like realm of um, marijuana and all that. I was late. Really? I was like in my late twenties. Surprisingly, yeah. that's like that's with Joe Rogan. He wasn't into his till his thirties when he was smoking. I was twenty-seven. What was that first experience like? I was just the, the friends I happened to be hanging out with at the, that time. Just I'd never really hung out with many pots. I never was against it, you know. Yeah, I'm not against, I'm not against it anything. Yeah. It's like, but I just was the group of friends that I had been with just didn't do it. And I got hanging out with some friends that did it and just started doing it. And I'm Sometimes like, it's your environment that cool. really influences you. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a certain feeling you get, really, like a relief of it? Because I always found it tensed me up too much. There's a thing called a green-out effect. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard about that. It's um you can overdose on pot. Not like die or anything, yeah, but you maybe. get major anxiety attacks. There's you know, certain you get sick to your stomach. I and definitely don't want yeah. to do it. You yeah. know, there's something. I don't do it like every night. It's nice it's to take like, the edge off. Yeah, it's like... I just, I'm not feeling it, you know, because you, like you said, I have done it sometimes and felt a little weird and edgy, but you know, now I know how I feel beforehand to not do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I know when you know it's okay to do it, when not to. Yeah. Like when I, if I do it and I'm by myself, I get real like paranoid and stuff. Yeah, well, it's hard to keep yourself like your mind kind of mm-hmm. not focused on certain things. Like yeah. a lot of times, I get end up getting too high. You end up trying to focus on not dying. Like, how do you breathe again? Yeah, like, I know. Wh- wh- how do I move my arms? <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, but I, don't know I, how. Went, I was doing something. I remember, and I'm like, I feel weird and dizzy. What's wrong with me? I remember I was brushing my teeth at the time. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm high. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been in the bathroom for thirty yeah, minutes. I was like, brushing my teeth. How do I get out of here? Something's wrong. I'm like, what? Up. You end up oh, rethinking yeah, yeah, your yeah. whole life. <laughs> That's, I mean, there's good parts about it too because, like, it does, it kind of lets you into your some things you need to work on in life. Like, it, if, you're, if you feel like you're slacking creative. in a way, it bring, it brings you down to like a, a road. Like, hey, well, let me narrow some stuff down for mm-hmm. you in a way. It can do that. Um, it depends on really how far you take it. Like with anything, anything become can become an addiction in mm-hmm. a way. Yeah. So what I what I want to get to is also the fact that you were in a car accident. Yeah. Explain that whole situation to me because I I barely have a clue. Did you end up getting, like, the money from? I got the some. Woman? Yeah, I got some money. I just, we um I was been over to Acetig one day with my dog, and when we're coming back, you know how that big turn is right there by Acetig Market. It's like a huge curve, mm-hmm. and I was coming off of Acetig. I think I guess I was heading toward Acetig. And around the curve, then all of a sudden he stopped curving and just went straight and slammed into me. Oh, I thought it was a woman that hit you. Mm-mm, it was a dude. It was a dude? Yeah. Was he drunk at all? He was drinking? Texting him too. So you're getting, um, you're definitely going to get paid off that one. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know, were you nervous at all getting back into the car after that? A little bit, especially when I went back to Aztec and went by the... Where it happened. happened. Yeah. And then I'm, I notice now, the least little thing I see a car doing, I'm a little, you know, just a little, little bit jump, You're a little shit, bit aware. Yeah. Well, see, the crazy thing about be, driving a car, or a lot of people don't understand where anger, aggression comes from when you're driving, is because you're so alert to everything mm-hmm. that's going on around you. You're so like, what's going to happen? This is perk and turn. You know, you're you're so aware of everything, so you're always on 10. Mm-hmm. So if you think of an amplifier, instead of being yeah. set at 1, you, as soon as you get but, in your car, even whether you know it or not, even if you feel chill... It's you're at 10 because you're so hyper alert of everything that's going on, especially we've all had those moments where, you know, a deer comes out of nowhere. Next thing you know, you hit the brakes before your mind can even think. Now, I actually was in an accident, too. Um, not not a car accident, but a jet ski accident. It was a couple years ago where um, I almost actually died. Uh, What happened was um, when you're uh, I was a jet ski guy at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually right by Assetee, close to the bridge where um, we traveled to where our riding area was. But you had to keep all these people in a line, and I noticed this one person behind me wasn't in the line. He was off looking at the ponies, mm-hmm. which they do when you're on jet ski. Yeah. That's the one thing you got to worry about. Once they get on the jet ski, it's really hard to control people and get them basically yeah, in a line yeah. all the way to the riding area that's like 10, 15 minutes away. So you're going 40 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour, depending on how fast we're booking it, usually around 40 because we give them the renter's key. And this guy's veering off and going after the horses all the way to the left of the islands. I'm like, he's going right over a sandbar where there's mm-hmm. a foot of water. His jet ski's going to get he's stuck. Gonna he's going to flip he's over his sandbars. I'm trying to think of everything that's going to go wrong. I'm like, okay, well, I need to stop him somehow. So I stop everyone behind me. I go over and get in front of the guy. I mean, a good... 
like half a football field away from him, mm -hmm. sticking my arm out, stop. And, you know, he had plenty of time. The woman saw me on the back of his jet ski. He's still looking off. He's a foreign guy. Mm -hmm. Not blaming it on that, but he didn't speak very well English. Yeah. And um, he wasn't even lined up to hit me. He turned into me. Mm -hmm. And when a jet ski's not moving in the water like mine was, yeah. it's flat. His jet ski was moving, so the front of the jet ski was up. Yeah. So he went up me like a ramp. And what happened was he went up me like a ramp, like from the front. And the front of his jet ski hit me in the chest. Now, the reason why I lived was because I was not sitting down. With jet ski guys, you have to stand up. It's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you ever have a jet ski and you ride, when it's bumpy, you want to stand up because you can get more control. You don't feel the, you know, the bumping mm -hmm. of the seat. You got more balance and it feels sturdy. Well, he hit me in the chest and I, the handlebars broke off into my hips and I didn't even know all this happened. I basically just shut my eyes and just yeah, let it happen. Um, it, it, was, it was that quick. And um, I cartwheeled, and then next thing I know, I'm pulling myself up on my jet ski, like laying myself on the seat. And my body knew my back was hurt before my brain did. Yeah. I didn't feel the pain. I was mm -hmm. still like, holy crap, that just happened. I ripped myself out of the water. Next thing I know, I'm, all, I'm sitting on this jet ski. I had no idea that what happened. That shit's scary. And next thing I know, people are like, I'm going to call 911, call 911. I hear everyone call 911. You know, everybody's pulling their phones out of the little glove compartment. And I floated to the islands on Assateague, just over the little marshland. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm laying on the seat, like, what just happened? Kind of staring at the water, reflecting about everything. And I'm, like, wondering why the side of my head's bleeding. I'm like, okay, this is weird. I just get up and start walking off the island. Next thing you know, every step I took, I could feel all the muscles in my back, like, like just crunching. Mm -hmm. like, it felt like my spine was just like, if I grabbed this, yeah. if I grabbed this can and just crushed it, it felt like, you know, it was like jello in a way. And um, I was like, so what I did was I went back to the jet ski, kind of sat down, and I looked, and there was a where my temple of my head cracked into the fiberglass of the jet ski. I broke fiberglass, but thank God I got a rock hard head, you know? And um, the whole jet ski was torn up, the mirror was broken off, and I looked at my hand, I still have a scar, but on my hand there's a, where the brake cracked into my yeah. uh, pinky knuckle, ripped the whole thing like that, because yeah. on a Sea Dew jet ski they had the gas and then they had the brake on left and right, which is like one of the very few jet skis that have that. So it's like a, a lot like a four-wheeler in a way, or if you're riding a bicycle, mm -hmm. you have the front and back yeah. brake, it's a lot like that. And um, it was just so traumatic, and I remember getting on a jet ski not even two days after that, which just like, I still get nervous now. Like even when, I'm, when I was guiding last year, it was like, when someone would get close to me, shut off your jet ski, I would scream at them, shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. And if they didn't shut it off, I would kind of, I, mean, I would book it the other way, 70 miles an hour. And it's crazy because I look at some of the guides that just drive straight up and basically play chicken with the person. And like, they don't stop. They just keep going while the other person's going, the dude's not paying attention. And then at last minute, they move out of the way. I'm like, I can't do that anymore. No, no, I, I never could. I never, I was, never did like speeding and going fast and stuff in college anyway. It's just like that sense of like, oh, you're so like, it happened once, it's not yeah. going to happen to me again. Yeah. And it's like, you're so aware. And I just feel like it's got to be difficult getting into a car accident and then getting back into the car after that, which you eventually end up doing. But it's like getting a brand new bike or yeah. getting a brand new car. Once you get the scratch, you don't want to get scratch yeah. on it. And then once you get the scratch on it, you're like, you know, fuck oh, well, it. Yeah. yeah, you just start tearing it up. The thing was, I had my, my dog was with me, my little dog. And um, well, I got trapped in the car and everything... Where he hit me, like the whole dashboard steering wheel and everything came in on me and like trapped so me in. Get out! And I didn't know airbags had like a powder. Yeah, yeah. When they hit so, you, so it was like. And then I saw this powder, and I There's thought it was fire. Everywhere. I thought it was fire because it was made like this smoke. Oh. I'm like, oh shit! Then I couldn't get out. Then I smelled something, and my dog had shit. It scared, I literally oh scared the God. shit out of him. That's and terrible. at first, I didn't know if it was him or me. You know, you I'm like, dog's, damn. Can you say your dog's name for me? Petey. Petey. Mm -hmm. Pay, that's not Petey. It's Petey. <laughs> Petey. And um, he was just, I looked, he was just sitting there just shaking. And um, luckily, a couple cars back, somebody I know came up and they, you know, they took him out. I handed it to him through the window. Then, the, you know, they came and cut me out of the car. It was a shock when I got out of the car to see the car, just how bad it looked. You know where the airbag sensors are located, right? Not really. On the front side of the vehicle. You ever seen Final Destination? No. Yeah. 
the second one, Mm-mm. where um, the girl is stuck, pinned up, basically like how you're saying the steering wheel was crushed mm-hmm. in, so she couldn't get out. Well, she had ran through a tree or something, so the log was cut over her legs, so she couldn't get out. And um, the dude used the jaws of life or whatever it is to break the door open, and he hit the front of the thing, and there was a pipe through the back of her seat that almost hit her in the head, and uh, the airbag pushed her head into it and killed her that way. Yeah, well, there was, you know, like I say, it hit. There, I had I had cut my head, and there was blood on the airbag too. And I'm like, surprisingly, the airbag is supposed to help you and be like, like, like a cushion. Well, I think it it, it did. It might have been painful though mm-hmm. when it comes out. If you see like videos, of people getting hit with that airbag, that thing mm-hmm. comes out like 50 miles an hour. But it's to stop you from slamming into the wheel and yeah. everything. Yeah, isn't that ridiculous it though? Worse, but yeah. has to have but that much your, force. It's, I've heard it's broken some people's noses. Oh, and it's broken mo- faces yeah. and stuff. Have you ever seen? The movie Blindside where the dude stops the airbag I and the kid's face is still messed up <laughs> afterwards. It's like, imagine, you know, if that would actually hit him. But I don't know if it, <clears throat> right after the, you know, if you, it just happens so fast and all of a sudden you're stopped. You know, and I'm like, shit, and that's when I'm looking all around and I heard people hollering, dial 911, call 911, and people are yelling and say, go check on him. And it's like, it seemed like forever and nobody was coming over to me. So I got on my phone and called my friend Jeff, who lives right down, not too far from there. I said, Jeff, I said, I've been in an accident. He said, what are you? He said, are you in the hospital? I said, no, I'm still right in the accident. I'm still, I'm still in still the car. Sitting, I'm still sitting Everybody's right Everybody's heard about the guy that hit me, not me. And then all of a sudden, then finally a guy came up to me, and Jeff said he heard the guy saying, are you all right? Are you all right? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, all, it's all, you know, I can't move all, over here. And, um... You know, it was, you know, I can laugh at it now. It was scared shitless at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you were, probably weren't able to drive for like a week yeah, after that. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't. I mean, Not just your car. My, my arm but... was all messed. I mean, my arm still has a scar on it. And is that what these bumps are? Damn, well, that's psoriasis, but this is, this, that there, you can see the scar there. That's the actual scar. Yeah, lucky, though. <laughs> yeah. No, even my, small... people, my dog would not get in the car for like six months. I mean, yeah, that's probably good. And you're going to have a small dog, too, so that's got to be traumatic. I'm surprised mm-hmm. he didn't go through the windshield. I don't see, he was in the back seat. That's where he sleeps in the back seat when yeah. you drive. And, and when it stopped, he was sitting right in, or he was standing in the front seat just staring at me, shaking. Probably hit the radio. <laughs> Forget to change the channel. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Cause I'm glad you're all right, and I'm glad well, that, that you got we can move past that situation, yeah. too. It's definitely going to be in your thoughts forever. But, hey, that you got a story now. I got, I got another story, yeah. So I do have to ask because mm-hmm. I've been I've actually been wanting to know this since I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. What's with the accent? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I, I'm, the region I'm from has an accent. What what region are you from? Chris, I'm from Chrisfield, about sixty miles south of here. So it's like a like a Maryland thing but where you go. No, where are you from? It's water. Our, water. Our our area. I mean, everybody has an accent. But for some reason, I have a worse accent than yeah. anybody. And, you sound uh, like you're southern, like you're. You everybody wild, thinks I'm wild like, West from like Georgia kid. or Mississippi or somewhere. Your own I get that a lot. Yeah, I get that a lot. Do you ever just tell people you're from there just to kind of change it yeah. up as a waiter or something? <laughs> do you ever disguise yourself when you're being a waiter? I've thought about it, but not have. You ever do an accent and see if you can rock it through the whole entire thing? Uh, no, I no, I have a thought. I don't think I can keep that up. If I got busy or something, I'd forget it. You know Sometimes what I mean? I, in public, when I'm like buying something from a store, I'll mm-hmm. change up my voice and yeah, make it sound cool. like you're yeah. like, I'm from Canada, eh? Yeah. I'm up from there in Toronto. <laughs> you know, change it up. It's because it adds, I don't know, it, sometimes it adds a little bit of fun to, to yeah, the thing. Yeah, it does, and then, yeah. Then it kind of sucks else. when they catch you. That's what I kind of like about acting. You, I can be somebody else. You can put a disguise on in a way. When I do murder mysteries and stuff, you know, I'm all different kind of characters. I've been, you name it, I've been it. Colonel Sanders in Colonel the Sanders. library yeah. with the candlestick. I've been, you know... I've been a, a, a doctor, a lawyer, I've been a circus. Um, What's your favorite play master? you've ever done? I don't know my favorite one. It's, it's I don't know. I mean, I, when we did The Wizard of Oz one time, and I was the wizard. I, I like that a lot. Behind, hiding behind the curtain? Hiding behind the curtain, yeah. That had to be, did you get the giant Jarrell head, basically? The thing from Superman where you get to see your face pop up? They on had the sort of something like that, yeah. That's but it cool. wasn't as cool as the movie, but the head's kind of like that, yeah. Now, do you know the his, that little uh, conspiracy that they have in The Wizard of Oz where the dude's hung in the beginning of yeah, the Yeah, I've heard something about that. Is that real? That. I, I don't 
I watched a video I and I didn't so. know if they edited the video out or something. It kind of looked like the Bigfoot so. video where you're yeah. like, is this real or just someone just messing mm-hmm. with me? You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I've heard that There are too. so many. Uh, what's your fascination with acting in a way? I guess because I, when I look at it, like when I see a movie. You can be somebody just getting out of who you are. Because that's how people who go to Comic Con are like. I've had a, interviewed a couple people that dress up as like Comic Con people, and you know that's what they enjoy is the whole fantasy aspect of either dressing up as their role model or not being themselves, being able to escape that. You can escape. Yes, yeah, you can. You can go like. Characters I've been, I think, are far more interesting than than who I am. So I can, you know, you can, I can be in a character and say stuff to people that I would never say to them. You know, just act in a way and do yeah. things and like interact if you with out, people. You went out in public it's, and then tried to bring old time Shakespeare language mm-hmm. into your conversation. Yeah. And people look at you like a weirdo. Yeah, and just yeah, but, just yeah, saying things to people and. You know, it's you crazy because if, if you actually... I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. As yeah. another character, I, somebody else, I feel comfortable saying something to them. It's a lot way. like um, when a lot of people are really, really shy, they put on a pair of sunglasses and next thing you know they're able to talk. Mm-hmm. Like they're able to speak their mind and do whatever and they want. And they feel like they're they're hidden and in a way. sort of... I can be the person I want to be. Yeah. But I'm like too shy to be in a way. I'm I'm so I'm shy. I've had problems with um, I'm social sh- anxiety disorder my whole yeah. life. I've 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 always been really really nervous to get on in front of anybody. I could make jokes in the back of a class, but getting up in front of some people, exactly. I immediately get sick to my me stomach, have to shit. You know, as me, I had that problem. Yeah, as but me. if I pretend I'm like somebody yeah. else, I don't have that problem. I can 100 percent relate say to you shit on that. Anything to anybody. Yeah. But it's, as me, I, I can't do it. Yeah, it's like when I took, I really didn't open up until I took my um, speech class. And mm-hmm. then once I took my speech class, I was like, we're all, the way I thought of it was, it, it just came to me one day. It was like, we're all just people. We're all living yeah. here together, you know. Why do I have to care what you think? Mm-hmm. Once I stop kind of, I mean, I still obviously care, you know. But it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's like I am who to, I am. You do, but you don't. don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? We all have that like thing. We all know like, oh, I want to dress this certain way because it's going to make me look this certain way. We all do that, mm-hmm. whether you admit it or not. You know, we all want to look good. We all want to be complimented. We all want that. But it's like, if you come to the aspect or like the, really the concept of the, like, you know, just being yourself and being like, you're going to accept me who I am. Obviously, you don't want to be... You know, an asshole, mm-hmm. but I mean, there's some people that are like, that's just my personality. I'm like, yeah. alright, well, I don't vibe with your personality. Doesn't mean we're supposed to be best friends. And I got to admire somebody who's, they're an asshole, they're an asshole, they kind of own up to it, you know, in a way. It's better than them being fakey to you and you find that they're really an asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've actually brought this up multiple times in a couple of my podcasts, which um, people that uh, break up with others... Um, when they find out who the real person is, like, once you get the wedding ring on the finger, mm-hmm. they're a whole completely different person. Like, I didn't know this side of you. Like, oh, this is really me. I was just, like, trying to get, you know, yeah. get what they wanted out of it. It's like, that sucks because a lot of times, like, that that, that can ruin friendships. Like, when a friend's like, all right, this is how I really am. Like, but it's also, there's hindrance to it. Like, someone that's on a medication and you meet them when they're on medication, mm-hmm. then one day they don't take their yeah, medication. Yeah, and the next thing you know, you're like, well, I didn't know this about you, big. Well, this is me when I'm not, you know, drugged up and I'm not, like, you know, clouded mind and everything. It's like, whoa, I didn't know this about you. That's why I believe, like, it's best to be as real as you possibly yeah. can with people. And I'm not saying you have to let people know you're on medication yeah, or something, but, but it's you like. You have to let them get to know. And that's. I've, I've always you have to get struggle to, with people getting to. Letting it's people like get to know me. Understanding someone's passion for someone. <laughs> I like, think like, I'm crazy. When, but... you're, when you're understanding why this person likes to dress up in this certain way, mm-hmm. you have to understand the science behind it, first of all. Why do they like doing that? Mm-hmm. Where did that come from? Their childhood influence? Did they watch a lot of TV? Did they have giant actor mm-hmm. inspirations? You know, a lot of my, you know, passion for wanting to be like a comedian and wanted to joke around and being a class clown was because of watching funny movies mm-hmm. and, you know, see like that. And then I took a communication arts class where I was able to film in high school. And then I took a... Um, an oral like communication class where you had to do speeches and I realized I want to use my voice to project that words but when I watch a movie from just taking a communication arts class I like making funny videos on Instagram doing quick stuff like that whether it was 
you know, they were popular, they were liked. I liked recreating movie scenes, you know, the scene from Anger Management yeah. where they're cooking eggs in the kitchen. Uh -huh. I remember when I showed you that, yeah. like, you know, being able to be some actor and do like a quick funny scene that can get somebody to laugh is always my passion and that was from watching comedians doing stand up and you know like watching all them and it just inspires me because I can see where like once you understand that whole process whether it's you know writing music whether you understand playing an mm -hmm. instrument you understand them better yeah like when they're playing you understand like oh he wrote it like that because it sounds like this or you know he wrote that joke like that because he's connecting it with this you get like the hidden meanings of you, stuff there's, there's, yeah what what your interpretation of it and what it actually means is a lot of times is way different you know well a lot of people don't understand like that's that's just not the group that you know they say like I hang around this group because mm. they get me in this way they get you because they're all into that too they yeah. all have done their research mm -hmm. they all have gotten into that aspect and kind of followed it and chased it farther down the rabbit hole where we all kind of stop and they understand it better so when you're vibing with them over that same topic you can have a full length conversation with someone about baseball if they're a fan of the same favorite yeah. team and fan of the sport but then you go to someone that's you know, a fan of football, and then they don't like baseball, you can vibe with them on the whole oh, aspect whole of football, thing, but then yeah. you try and bring baseball into it, and they don't know who the hell you're talking mm -hmm. about. You have to find people, or just at least, if everyone, I believe, in society educated themselves, like, dip their toes into a little bit of everything, everything. and understanding things, we would be a lot more open in society. We're very closed off. because We are. It's, it's better than it used to be, but we're, we're still in a way, kind of closed, yeah. yeah. But it's like, if we just educate ourselves more, like, I didn't know a whole lot about you know certain things and then people were like oh if you just researched it up i'm like oh my god well thank you for explaining yeah. that to me because now yeah. i actually understand it and i'm not yeah. you know i think the selfish stuff i thought before like why would that, that anybody yeah. do that exactly it. there's still certain things i don't get like people that put ranch on their pizza i think you're i don't i don't mean disgusting. either i can't get that you probably get that all the time i can't get that yeah dumping ranch yeah. on there <laughs> i never did understand that why don't you try it i have tried it it tastes it terrible and gross. then peanut butter sandwiches with mayo you're a sick sick uh -uh. sick person Person. That's that's gross. That is gross. But some people do like um, what is it? Pickles and something. I had a friend. Pickles of mine. and chocolate. People do that. That's actually okay. I've never tried. If that. you tried that, you take a little Snickers or something and shove it inside of a pickle after you cut the inside of a pickle out. It's actually not bad. I would be like, okay, you know what? You you, you win here. You I had a friend here. of mine used to pour low and brow over vanilla ice cream. What is that? Beer. Beer over vanilla it's ice cream. Cream float. Beer float. <laughs> I mean, I guess people are into different stuff. Like, I eat jello sometimes and mm. I mix it with like hot sauce or something. But, like, the gelatin, like, oh, it's all bites and stuff. Like, yeah. But, I mean, I, I've eaten salads or stuff. Everything's so bland. You want to spice it up with like mustard. You got mm -hmm. to, or you're just like, yeah, yeah. Can't live off that forever. It's, you end up wanting taste or flavor and you end up freaking out. But it's like, I under, it, people got different tastes, whether people it comes with food, taste, yeah. whether it comes with a hobby, man. Yeah. Everybody's different. You got to accept, you got to try to accept people for what they are, you know? It's, and it's hard to do. It, it, is, it is hard to do. It's a lot it like. It is hard to do. That's why what you were saying, you got to educate yourself on stuff and try, yeah. try to understand. Have you ever just taken the time to read a book? Mm -hmm. That's something I've been trying to get more into, like. Just taking the time to sit down and actually read a book. Like I, I get a bunch of books from thrift stores. You know? Yeah, me too. Or like records. It's a good place. Thrift stores. A lot of people are. Dude, people are knocking thrift stores, and I they love shouldn't a thrift be. Thrift store. Because you can buy. I mean, a nice. I bought a nice mm. quick sh silver shirt for like a dollar twenty five. Isn't it amazing like, what you can find at the thrift store? Bowling balls mostly. Bowling balls, golf clubs. Someone's a lot of golf clubs. Out their there. Hey, another man's <laughs> trash is another man's treasure. That's right. That is right. But it's like you find you find good stuff where it's like you know you might not ever wear it again after the first mm -hmm. time, but like for a dollar, for a dollar, yeah, what is it? Buy a nice Harry Potter book for a dollar. Next, yeah. you know, you sell it for hundreds of dollars. It's like people don't you even know what know. they're throwing away. You never know what you can find. I'll never free. I can recollect all my old toys that like because my parents got rid of my toys mm -hmm. when I was at a yard sale. Not thinking that since I didn't play with them anymore, yeah. but now they're worth so much money. I know, so much and a lot of them are coming back like, the into stores like they're shit, selling man, at Walmart yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, whenever I go to a thrift store and see one of them, I'm like, oh my God, five bucks for this whole bin? You Here's 50. You know, like just toss it down. Mm -hmm. The guy's looking at you like, all right, we'll have fun with that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I will. That's cool. It is cool. You just see some stuff there, man. Like you just you remember when you, like you said, you remember having when you were a kid and don't know what happened to it. And you're like, oh, I think I'm going to get that. Because there's, like, there's a certain aspect you don't know what you have until it's gone. Uh, yeah, that's true. 
You know, that's, that's how that's how we're all gonna really look back on life. You know, yeah. we're not gonna understand what we're gonna have with all our time that we wasted until yeah, it's gone. That's yeah, true. And that's why I'm like, you need to chase. Everyone needs to chase after whatever they're going for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, it, I I I still I'm at the age of 21. I don't know what the hell I want to do. And that's a, <laughs> with a lot of kids my age. But there's people at 70 that still mm-hmm. don't know what oh, they want to do, what what they want to chase down and. You know, I'm happy I found out that I, I like interviewing and talking to people You're and getting at. everybody's an experience. I mean, thanks. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not the best, but you know, I'm I'm getting there. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You're doing it. I That's just want to make sure that it. I'm entertaining. But I'm, I'm so supportive of the people that have pushed me to chase mm-hmm. down this path even further. Like people that have been listening since the very first one I put up. People that were telling me I should do it just to do it because well, you, you have a passion for it you you want I didn't to think do I it. did either and you know I've but inter- I can tell I can tell you do I've interviewed some people where I was like you should have a podcast I'm like I don't know if I want to do it I'm like I'm very supportive when it comes to someone else mm-hmm. making their podcast and, and I've had people come up to me and go well you know why would you want more competition in a way they're just, maybe they're gonna like your podcast or mine good you know, I'm going to have my I'll people that like listening yeah. to my conversations. I'm not doing it for, you know, anybody specific. I'm doing it for, um, mm-hmm. I'm doing it for, uh, like, just anybody that wants to listen. Because one person enjoys it. You've done your, you've got Exactly. It. Um, Christopher Ryan, he's got the same uh, podcast recorder with me. But, you know, there's certain things that you get at a, at a conversation that either, like, really, really, we all have those friends that are like, you remember a certain conversation you mm-hmm. had with that person at three yeah. o'clock in the morning, whether you were wasted or you know baked off your ass, yeah. and you're just like, that was a real moment. I've had moments like that with everyone very, very close to me that I considered a best mm-hmm. friend. Yeah, I've had too. that are basically my family, and those moments. And sometimes it took years to work them up to that, but it had sometimes it takes them up to get to a certain point, whether it's getting hammered to open up themselves. Yeah, truly lose that inhibition. That's but I had one of the best moments ever, where you know it was like a real moment where like I, this this guy, even though we don't talk a lot anymore because you know we're busy with work, mm-hmm. we're busy with school, or what's going on. He's my freaking brother. If he broke down, I would come down yeah. and pick him up and, you know, I would be there any moment he needs me. If I got a text from him and I saw it, I would be there 100%. It's those moments when you if when you have that with someone and you can have those in a podcast. A lot of the times like when you're talking to someone, we're going to be you know, we're we're going to after this conversation's over, we're going to be like, what did we even really talk about? We know certain things we narrowed yeah. down, but it's uh, my my buddy put up a post on um, Facebook saying what the conversations is like with someone with ADHD, and I'm mm-hmm. pointing at myself here. It's like, you know, they go everywhere. There's like 50 different circle topics and a bunch of arrows going to different topics, like bam, 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 like across something things, because our mind rambles back, and then mm-hmm. we just go back to something. Like yeah, I'd go back to something you were talking about half an hour ago and go back. Yeah, exactly. It's like, but it's conversation, and it, you gotta find. You know, there's people that are like. You know, I'm not good at conversation. There's people that are shy. You got to get them to open up because they mm-hmm. their mind's just as creative as yours well, is. Yeah. Nobody's mind's more creative. We definitely have people that stand out in our history, but that's how we view it. But we all have a certain outlet or something yeah, that we can chase down and agree. pursue that brings us down to, you know, a Da Vinci level. I mean, Da Vinci has one of my all-time favorite quotes where he says, "Art is never or art is never dead, only left abandoned. Or art is never finished, only left abandoned." And that's hmm. true because you can constantly work on something and improve it. Yeah. You can you can still work on the Mona Lisa and improve it, but that's where he felt like he was done, and that's where he stopped at. You know, we're all in society. We're always constantly looking to change. We're always constantly looking to improve things. And there's some things we don't we shouldn't be as focused on, like the next iPhone. Every, I can, everything is going to change. I can wait, yeah, mm-hmm. for the next iPhone. But you know, we're also bringing stuff back. A lot of stuff's getting thrown back. Old TV shows, old styles of clothing. That's what I was getting ready to say. Old TV shows, man, are coming back all the time. You know, and it's it's like because it, that you become end up changing things so much that some people are like, wait a minute, I wasn't done with that yet. Mm. I wasn't done. Like, True. you know, it's like when the waiter grabs mm. your food before you're mm, finished. Yeah. You're like, I'm not done with the steak. Mm. You know, I still got my veggies left. My grandma's <laughs> gonna be pissed and take the veggies away. And it's like. With that whole thing, it's just it's just amazing because see, because you know we're we're just this organism that's just slowly developing. But it, in a way, it, when I say slowly developing, in our eyes, it's happening so quick for some of us. Mm-hmm. Some of us, like you blink, next thing you know, it's ten years in the future. That's how it's been for me. I I just can't believe time has gone by so fast. 
Now, do you look back and see any mistakes in your life that you no, wish you could kind of change? Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, there's times I sit there and, like, I remember something from fourth grade. I'm like, oh, my me God. Too. It I just remember, keeps me yeah. up at night. I'm like, Jesus. Me, too. From, like, first grade and just things you said. I remember things I said or something in middle school or something. Like, hey, you know, why did I do that? Why did I say that or whatever? It's just, it's it's insane to think about, you know, mm-hmm. when, you, when it comes down to it. I mean... Dude, I think the, I haven't eaten an Uncrustable in forever, but I remember I just got over, like, the, that giant flu that came down mm-hmm. here. And, man, I swear to God, I went to the bathroom so hard I crapped out an Uncrustable <laughs> from, like, third grade, man. I was like, I'm tasting peanut butter. <laughs> and, dude, you got to think that this is your little, your little treat, your little mm-hmm. moments you get in life where you're like, I freaking love these things. Yeah. Like, there's those little, like, there's some stuff that, you know, uh, yeah. I hope they never change on Crustables. I'm already pissed when Michelle Obama changed the freaking, they, they're already in a package, so you have to change them before they get in the package. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I keep going to Uncrustables. Every time I look at you, I think they, you're wearing the hairnet and the apron and all yeah. this stuff, making sloppy jokes. <laughs> all Billy Madison, yeah. I made them extra sloppy. Just for you. Just for you. I know how you like them sloppy. <laughs> Lady, you're scaring us. <laughs> That's that's cool, man. Yeah. I, I you know it's you know during this you can ask me stuff if mm. you want to ever you know it's a conversation like I was saying. I don't want to make you feel like you're just targeting. I'm willing really to try. This has been I've loved every second of this. I love it because like in the kind of beginning of the podcast, you were kind of like sitting there like you know like oh, I didn't, tense no, yeah stuff. you you were boy you relaxed me and then I, I relaxed you down. That's what I like the whole podcast to be like. It, I like it how it's like it's kind of like a we just boil down and talk. We're shooting the shit. We're not mm. going anywhere. I like it. You know, what I was saying about Christopher Ryan, where he said he's got the mobile recorder. You know, he was reading this book, and um, it was about a guy that tried to change his microbiome. I don't know if you know what a microbiome is. Basically, the dude was shooting African water up his ass to Mm. clean out his genetic um, makeup, thinking he can get the certain genetic biome from that area by just shooting water up his butt. And um, he was talking about it in Australia at some bar. He was like, yeah, I'm reading this book about this guy about Mm. genetic biome marking. And he goes, yeah, my buddy wrote that book. Now, when you hear that, you're like, all right, this guy's bullshitting with me. He's at a bar, we're drinking, yeah. and he's just like, oh, my buddy did that. You know, I knew some guy that did that. Sure you know? did. Yeah. Well, it was the guy that wrote the freaking book that he was reading. He met in Australia at a bar, and he pulled out his podcast recorder, and they podcast, and they actually hung out for three days after that. Oh, cool. But he didn't know the guy was going to be there. It was just a random... You, you never know. It's like you randomly you you know, know. bump into freaking Gene Simmons at uh, Super, mm-hmm. or Super Fresh or something. Like, whoa, Gene Simmons. What's mm-hmm. up, man? What are you doing? Getting groceries. Yeah. It's like, oh, God. Like, I know. Gene Simmons gets groceries, too. <laughs> you don't think of... The- yeah, everybody's just a, everybody's just a real person. And he you know? gets on his Pegasus and flies out. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's like that type of stuff. It's like when we look at like Tom Cruise and all these people that like, okay, he gets into Scientology, which mm-hmm. is you know that's yeah, that's I don't, weird I don't as hell. All that, so, yeah. Well, it's a, a lot like religion. I believe uh, the person that rate you know the difference between religion and um, conspiracy or myth is mm-hmm. the person that made religion is dead. Hmm. The person that made a conspiracy is usually still alive. alive. The one that invented Scientology was a redhead scientist. Oh, Ron Hubbard. (laughs) That everything he created was wrong, but apparently Scientology was correct. Yeah. So take that where, you know, everything he said was a lie, and then take that as, you know. Yeah, that's the thing. That's where it goes. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy how they are. Like, have you ever heard Leah's Remney? Oh, I have watched her. On on Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan about Mm -hmm. the whole thing? Did you watch that? Well, she has her, no, I didn't see that, but she has her own show I've watched about Scientology sometimes. There's a guy, um, I forgot what his name is, Carl something, or Dan something he's he has he's 80 years old mm-hmm. has three kids that are still stuck in Scientology he hasn't talked to his kids in 20 years he hasn't seen his grandkids because they are not allowed to talk to him because if they Scientology crazy. found out they, that he was talking to him he immediately went out against the church they had to block communications that with is, him that is just and he's like I'm about to die you know like I'm getting close to the end of my years I want to see my grandkids and I can't see them because, you know, they just won't talk to me. They won't accept any of my calls. Mm-hmm. They won't answer me back. And Leah was like, you know, she was explaining, like, her whole thing with her mom and everything. And her mom had to fake act, like, when she was learning all this stuff to act. So just because she wouldn't rat out on her mom. 
Like they were meant to rat your parents out. Like you're mm-hmm. meant to do that. Like if your certain parent doesn't believe that these certain things, they would excommunicate you. And they like one of her friends, Leah's friends, was like, "Where's you know what's her face? She hasn't been here in forever." They were like, "You don't have the authority to ask about her. She's my friend. What are you talking about? You're not a high enough level." Mm-hmm. It's like. What? Oh yeah, the woman, the guy's wife. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I did say something. But I saw That's ridiculous. Like that. mm-hmm. And then like all the awards and trophies she's won because she's donated a certain amount of money. If you mm-hmm. donate a certain amount of money, you get a trophy, you get a statue built after you. What kind yeah. of religion are we following? That where you have to pay to for the recognition. Yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous, man. It is ridiculous. It's crazy. I mean, I I'm not. I don't mean to bash anybody's religion when it comes to that aspect, but it's like. You know, everything about, like, religion has some type of, like, thing to it where someone explains it. Like, where it's mm-hmm. with the Jewish people believing, you know, like, you know, Jesus was, you know, Jesus was uh, whoever was the Messiah, yeah, and, Messiah, you know, all that type of stuff. And then, like, people that religiously God and then people that believe in the elements. I don't mind if that's what your thing is. If that's what you want to believe, go ahead and believe. Mm-hmm. But if you believe in Scientology, I'm sorry, but that just sounds like a load of horse shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wrap my head around me, you know, if you want to go far into that, but don't bother me with that. Well, I think religion should be like a a, a, a loving sort of giving thing. It should you be know, like an want, option on yeah. the menu. You shouldn't have to be chosen, like you, haven't, you shouldn't would, have to be forced to get it. You would want to, no matter what your family is or what they, how they believe or your, how your friends believe. That shouldn't affect your belief and you should still be able to be friends well, what's with the two them. Thing, what's the two things you can't bring up on at a um, dinner table or you don't want to bring up at dinner? Religion and politics. Those are the exact same. Yeah, you can <laughs> they're only both kind of the same thing. Literally, a lot. yeah. It's like you can't bring because those are two things you can completely have a hundred percent of the facts. Argue all you want, and you guys will never come down we'll to an opinion. One person has thing. their view. One person has the other view. That's why you never want to bring friends over when you know grandpa's over. Yeah. Grandpa starts spouting stuff about like certain presidents or certain religions, and next thing you know. <laughs> Everyone's sitting at the table, like just trying to shove yeah, the that's, yeah, that's baked how, potato in their mouth, yeah, trying to get through the night. The generations have changed, though. We know, like, things that I remember hearing, you know, older people say, you know, when I was a kid. There's a different aspect like, of getting, Oh my God, yeah. you know, they would you'd be shot almost now if you well, there's said something a, like that. A different vibe you get from being around your grandparents and being around mm-hmm. your parents. Depending yeah. on what age you had your parents have. Now my buddy, his dad was in his sixties. He's adopted. Mm-hmm. So his dad was in his sixties. He was adopted when he was around eight years old. So like his vibe was like, you know, you're in bed at ten o'clock, you're mm-hmm. this type of stuff. Like th- until he was like twenty. Like even past when he was eighteen, his dad was very, 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 very wealthy. And um, all his brothers and sisters were adopted. They had an elevator in their house. I got lost in their oh, house yeah. so many freaking <laughs> times. But um you know, his dad had set the alarm at 10 o'clock, and you could not leave the house at 10 o'clock. And now I'm used to, you know, being around my family that are younger, so my parents worked all the time mm-hmm. going DJs and, yeah. you know, being out mm-hmm. and doing that stuff. So if I wanted to leave the house, I could leave the house. Yeah. They trusted me, you know, to go and, you know, they, I knew how to get home. I knew if I, I had my cell phone on me, if I needed anything. Mm-hmm. His dad, they had all the new technology and everything. They couldn't use it past a certain time, had restrictions. Yeah. For the longest time, he just got, like, last year was able to now go out on his own and become his own adult person. I was like, but it's like there's a, a different aspect. He was raised in the time period. You're in bed at this time, you get up at this yeah. time. You're in bed at this time, you get up to this time. Same thing if you have a grandparent or somebody that went through the depression. Mm. When you see them eat, when I see my grandfather eat chicken, he taught me how to eat chicken. You basically suck it off the bone. You eat you the bone, eat whatever. You eat the bone, that's just more protein. That's what I'm... Well, my parents went through the depression, and when they ate, they ate, their plate you was clean. You sat there, so the, that that was the thing in our our grandparents' house: mm-hmm. clean plate club. You licked you, your you, plate you clean, clean because you don't know. Because back then, you don't know when you'd eat again. There'd be sometimes. nights I'd be yeah. there'd be nights I'd be sitting there for hours and hours and hours because I drank three glasses of chocolate milk before I got down to my um, chicken tenders and then <laughs> broccoli. And the next thing you know, chicken tenders are all gone, and the broccoli's still there. But I'm a big fan of broccoli too. So the only thing was like. There was a certain like vegetable I didn't like, but you know I, I realize now like how picky of a kid I was when it came to oh, food right. and all that. You know my brother was like I don't want my food to touch. You know I, I don't want this something. To... Well, I, you got to look at how you know your grandparents see. Like they eat everything. They don't yeah. care if it tastes bad, it tastes good. It it's just food. Must it's have been food. horrible. By, I mean the depression must have been bad. I mean you have to stand in line for hours just to get. You know, a loaf of bread or just yeah, and, you know, every not ge- even having the money to do that. I feel bad in Egypt that, you know, their bread was 
it was grounded down with stone. Mm-hmm. Their teeth were completely oh, yeah. grounded down into powder. Because from, there was so much little sand, like sand. Yeah, and, and it's like yeah. stone from all that, you know, how they made the bread and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's got to suck. And then we're here now where we're like going to the outback asking for like a fifth loaf yeah, of the appetizer. That bread is good. I don't know what it how, is. Yeah, it's just, you, you got to think how people what some people don't have and how some people live and really appreciate what you I do I saw a have. picture of a kid in Africa where you could see his ribs. Mm-hmm. I mean, to the point where they're ripping through the skin. The stomachs get swollen and by the see, ribs. You can see the ribs. You see models here that are going through that same thing, but that they choose to do that so they can look it, a yeah. certain way. And it's it's definitely a mind aspect. I'm not going to doubt that at all because there's a definitely a body mm-hmm. you know, image issue thing oh, that yeah. society plays in life. We've all experienced that. How and you never see any of those bodies out on the street, are you? know what I mean? Exactly. Just like, that's, it's, that's it's, like nobody you it's know a false looks image. like that. <laughs> all those bodybuilders don't keep that year mm. round. They don't have that. They have their. That's like a right after a good poop and right after mm. a nice workout that they're ripped like that. You don't yeah. keep the six pack. As soon as you drink a water, as soon as you drink a soda, it's gone immediately. It's like, it doesn't stay there 24 7. It's only when you're completely drenched from not having any, you know, fluids mm. in you. But it's like thinking about all this stuff, it's like. What you're saying is where it's cool to hide behind a disguise in a way, but that's a terrible disguise to try and hide behind. And I yeah. know that's not what you're talking about, but well, I mean, I, I get where what society mean. wants to play this role of how it's we have to, to be look. exhausting to do that. You 24/7 know what I mean? Yeah. to change who you are as a person. Now, you understand that you wouldn't want to be somebody else 24/7. No. You still want to be yourself. Well, you yeah. still want to have your image. And um, one of, I, I forgot what the play's called. Um, I think it's called The Crucible. I don't know if you ever heard I've of this. Heard of it's it. an old yeah. style play. Well, the guy John, um, John, uh, John something. Not, I'm not saying John Waters. John something. He was a, some Christian guy or whatever. But mm-hmm. was shown as a loyal and trustworthy man to the whole public. But he was cheating or having an affair on his wife with some girl. And then she came out, and instead of ruining his image, he'd rather be hung yeah, than the, the, ruin the his image. image. Yeah. You know, that's ridiculous. And they're like, if you just admit to it, we won't hang you. And he's like, no. He's like, I didn't do it. And just stuck with it, because his image was too important to him. Bad, 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 we bad. all care about how we look to other how people we're rather than by how, everybody else. how yeah. we actually are. We don't care about the inner true self of our being. And that's where yeah. it's like really honest when you see someone that like, not I'm not talking about the people that say I speak my mind. This is how that goes. I'm not talking about that at all. That's not that's not. I don't consider that being honest. I don't consider yeah. that as being a hundred percent person. I consider that as being rude because you feel as you can be rude. Yes. You exactly. don't want to say, hey man, you know, you you got something on your shoe. But there are, are ways to like, say what's on your mind too, instead of just being in a, a, a passive way. Yes. Yeah. There's not a way to like, you know, I, my aunt from Brazil says, I speak my mind, I speak how I feel, you know, she was insults everyone, mm-hmm. it's like, that's, there's a difference between speaking your mind and being rude, being ass, yeah. there's sometimes <laughs> you have to let somebody know, hey man, you can't be doing this, mm-hmm. you can't be doing something like that, you want to be your true self, be a good person, what's so hard about doing that, what's so, so hard about smile, what's so hard about letting somebody know, hey, I'm not in the mood for it today, yeah. you know, this is how exactly. I feel, It's not hard. If someone came up to me and let me know they're on level 10 before I got up to them, I'd be like, all right, I'll keep my distance. Thanks for warning me, and I appreciate it. That is, yeah. It's a lot when we talk about educating ourselves on topic. Why don't we just educate ourselves on people? On people, exactly. And how to to just truly, honestly deal with people. Now, uh, another thing I want to bring up, and Mm -hmm. honestly, I hate... Even even saying it because every time I do, my mom's like, "Who cares if he is or not?" No, I am being no, gay. I am being, yeah, being gay. Who gives a shit? Why is that so looked down upon? Well, well like I said, that's one of the things that's gotten better since I've I've known I was gay since I was my earliest memories. I've known it somehow. You should look up my podcast. Um, 27, I think it came out, um, with my friend Brian. Mm-hmm. I knew he was gay all through school. I called him gay so many mm-hmm. times. Everyone thought I was being a dick mm-hmm. to him. He came out as gay. I was like, dude, I fucking knew it. It's not because I was trying to prove that, you know, you're gay. I know you're gay because of the way you dress. No, I just, just sensed it. Just let him know it's okay. I just sensed it. But I just felt like he was hiding something. And he was like, I thought everyone knew. I was like, no, dude, you didn't talk to anybody. You just drew. And then I, I was constantly called a jerk. And even you called me a jerk for calling you it. And he goes, I guess I just didn't know myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, when he was on my podcast, he had social anxiety, too. He had talked about having to take a shot before he came over. Like, I'm like, dude, you're talking to me. Either if I just met you or if, you know, we've known each other forever, 
I'm, we're going to have the same relationship. Yeah. Obviously, I'm going to know personal and more mm-hmm. and like stories that can boost the common thing, but I want to learn everything about you, stuff I yeah. don't know, stuff what you want to talk about. We're not going to get it all wrapped up in one podcast. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to have you back on again whenever you get a chance, whether it's probably going to be a year from now or where I randomly <laughs> trap you at my house or something. But it's like you said you knew. From- I knew when I was a little kid. I, I've always known. And then when I got, you know, I never thought anything of it. You know, I just, you know, I was just more attracted to guys. Even for the evening, as a little kid, it was like I, I knew I was different. And then when I got, started getting older and, you know. You feel like to hide it in a certain I way? I did. I tried my best, but evidently I didn't, weren't that great at it. But I, I just thought, I've got to hide this shit. Because you don't, you don't tell this to anybody or your life will be over. I mean, you'll be hunted down. You'll come knock your door down in the middle of the night. That's that's what I grew up thinking. And then I made the mistake of, in elementary school, telling a friend of mine, you know, about it. Well, evidently, he'd, like, told everybody that summer that he knew. And when I went into middle school, it was like, when I was in middle school, I was tortured every day. It was like, like I what dreaded. What did they call you? How did they torture a gay person? You know, you just fight with your dad, you faggot. And I mean, I'd be walking down the hall and something would fly and hit me in the head. It tripped me and shit. And just, you know, just constantly hearing the word faggot all the time. And probably and, drew um, dicks on your stuff. And I never, I never complained about it. Never went to a teacher. Never went to my parents. Never complained you about it. suppressed the hell out I of it. I just took all that shit. Suppressed the hell out of it. Uh, when I got to high school, it was a little better. I was kind of invisible in high school. You know, it's like... Yeah. And then, my junior year, I was in a play. And um, at our school, all the assemblies and plays and everything were at the end of the day. And when if that bell rang and whatever was going on wasn't over, the kids didn't give a shit. They, you know, they got up and they left. Yeah. And we did the play... And I had this one part where they went crazy and laughing and shit, you know, and then the play went on and then it was over and we were going to do the curtain call. Curtains opened up and, you know, the first, well, as soon as the curtain opened up to do the curtain call, the bell rang. Everyone left right at your part. No. It was like, oh shit, they're not even worth it because they're all going to leave. Well, they didn't leave. The first people came out and they booed them off stage. The second bunch came out and they booed them off stage. I came out, the whole place, like, cheered. Really? Stood up and cheered. And then, you know, then I walked off the stage. When I walked, you know, to the side, that's when everybody left. <laughs> Dang. And from that day on, people were seeing me in the hall. And were like, oh, Richie died, you crazy, you know, all this stuff. And I got, like, real popular for my junior year and my senior year of high school. It sucks it took so long to get to that point, though. I know. But, dude, I, I, I can relate to you with the hardships of going through middle school being bullied oh, and stuff God, like that. They had probably the worst times of your life. I dreaded waking up. Where you didn't school. want to go to school the next day. And yeah, I see, exactly. I mean, not to call you out, but you're cheering up a little bit. All like, the time. I, I know. I can, I can correlate to that. Like, man, that's stuff that it scars on you. It does. Whether it's it emotional was, or physical. Like I said, I had social anxiety. And I had all that shit anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're probably like, I don't want to get on the bus. I don't want to go to school. You're probably, there are certain people you wanted exactly. to avoid when you were going I had to every disease in the world, I think. I would come up, I'd be sick with something. Well, you can't, you can't look, you can't go on WebMD either. Be like, no, right, no, yeah, back, back then, ten minutes back later, then, like, I have couldn't. freaking stage four cancer. Back it's too then, late. Kidney's got to go. Back then, there was no such thing as that. But right it's there. like, you know, we don't understand. And it was for a while after school too. I was like in my late twenties before I started getting more comfortable with it. Yeah. You know, when I came out, when I started coming, I, I'm finally. I lived in my small town after I graduated. You know, I'm like, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't. I'm just, I'm just gonna work, hide and work. You know, why aren't you going out on a date with a girl this weekend? Oh, I gotta work. Yeah. You know, it's like work, work, work. That's all I did. And finally, it was just like you never have really the time to this sit sucks. down. This Yeah. This. Did yeah, you ever I can't s- do this? Did you ever get close to having a relationship, like a no, marriage? No. Just the work thing. Just, just the work thing. Yeah. And you never had kids, Mm-mm. nor adopted or anything like that. You never wanted Good any dogs. I I have trouble enough taking care of myself, and it was you know. I... Well, something I was really open <laughs> about in my podcast, where my one fear of having kids is I'd accidentally be the dad that got a uh, not accidentally, but would have a mentally challenged kid, mm-hmm. and I don't 
know if I'm strong enough to handle that. I don't know if I'm strong enough to have any kid because that's just, it's just it's a big more, responsibility. It's so much responsibility. But like I joke around, like you know, I'll have four kids and name them after the Ninja Turtles, like something like that. But it's yeah. like when I when I look at like the parents that have like you know the little kids are cute and you're like oh I want a kid you know that type of thing mm-hmm. and then you look at like all the work that actually goes behind it like the behind the that's scenes just, it's like a oh setting up God. for a play there's so much work and like but then when they start driving you know what my kid who I love is it goes out driving I don't know where they're doing and getting in accidents and and I think of the things I did when I was yeah. a kid I don't think they're out there doing it that crazy it's you know what's really crazy to think is when you when you look at you know, like a, a kid that's mentally disabled or physically disabled, and you know you're in a store, and you know, like, damn, thank God I'm not that mm-hmm. guy. It's like that th- to see so that from his eyes. Incredibly and difficult. I've I've read this book, and I, I I want you to look it up. It's called Cruise Control. Is the series book to it? But there's another book where it's like Mind Control or something like that. It's from the aspect of this kid in a wheelchair who like it, he like makes growling noises to people mm-hmm. and everyone sees that but he's as smart as Stephen Hawking's and it's 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 through his mind but he can't mm-hmm. express himself his body's basically on it's a lot like with Lou Gehrig's is you use your body shut yeah. down you just get locked inside your body it's horrible. like that and it's like it gives you a whole other aspect of looking at them and like where I, I talk about educating yourself more exactly. on things if you understand mental Try to disabilities where understand from. genetic disorders understand things like this you understand a whole side of what a person can be dealing with you're not going to understand exactly 100 percent of what they're going through but knowing you know people and knowing how like i can understand the bullying thing and then you know being able to uh, re- not saying research like you're some type of creature but research myself on the, the yeah. on what being gay is mm-hmm. what is that thing i never not that gets what played on the tv yeah i've you know never I mean? i'm well i remember from the time i you know you learned that you know this is not, you know, not that it's not right, but when you're told and you hear that it's not right and it's the biggest sin in the world, I remember I prayed every night. I begged God to not be gay. You begged God to not be gay? To that I would wake up, let me wake up tomorrow morning and not feel this way. Not, you know, and let it, you know, somehow... That I mean, I'm like this is it's the worst sin in the world, but I I I've, I I have no choice over it. It's it's not like someone know, that's what, hit that was, you with a stick and was like you're gay. It's just it's that was that was my thinking back then. God, and I beg I would, me I would cry, man. beg God every night. Not fall asleep crying, begging. Let me just be normal. You but you are normal. It took me a long time to find. Well, I won't go quite that far. But it took me a long time to realize it, that it's just the way it is. And you probably felt so just rejected from life in general. You probably felt like a freak. And well, finally, it just I just said, this, uh, this is it. You know, I got to tell somebody. And the first person I ever actually said the words to, I'm just like, Spoiled yeah, okay. It. Who? My friend Carolyn. Not the one that went around telling everybody. No, no. Well, no, not that. I mean, actually, I knew what gay was and what it meant and everything. Yeah. The first person I ever told that to, she was like, really, are you? I'm like, yeah. She said, yeah. Obviously, okay. Obviously, that pain still kind of hangs there. It does. But it's like, it's probably a giant burden when you finally were being able to be open about it and not give it a, a shit. And, and it nobody sucks that, that it took so long to get to that point. But the fact that you were praying to God changed these things. Mm-hmm. I was getting pissed when I was a little kid and I did pray to God and I was asking for superpowers. And now mm-hmm. I look at that and I look at you. <laughs> Compare it to your story, how selfish of a you know oh, idiot kid I was. Well, but it was no, like don't, and, um, we don't understand the whole aspect. The kids that pray that they're going to you know get food the next day and the kids yeah. that pray that you know basically to pray the gay away it's like there's nothing wrong with you but the way that you grew up in that time period was like society and, um, was telling you yeah. straight up hey you're... ever since that first person i told it was like it made no difference and i'm like if they're truly my friend anyway they won't they won't care they're gonna love you like i, I told my buddy i was like if you ever came out as gay trans whatever the hell you were i wouldn't care because I, 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 I like you. I don't like... Mm-hmm. I remember when I finally told my mother. I said, you know I'm gay, right? She goes, I'm, I'm like, I just got to tell you I'm gay. She's like, yeah, I know. I've always known. Yeah, that's what she said. She said, I've, I've, I've known. 
I hate it when they say always new. Like, why the fuck do you need to tell me then? <laughs> why do you tell me new? But not they're struggling. Yeah. But you know, man, it's it. Where I say bullying's bad, bullying has benefits to it when it when it forms you into. Some people get stronger from it. Right. Yeah. You find. It's true. Yeah, but uh, it definitely leaves some type of scarring. And I mean, there's not the best. And with technology, we like to take that a little too far. But I'm glad you were able to come to a point where you realized well, like being gay wasn't a disease. It's, yeah. It's. I sort of thought it was like something is so. This is bad. Wrong. This like is the fucking worst. You, this is the worst you know, thing that. I used to think this is the worst thing a person could be when I was a kid. I think the worst thing you probably could be is like a serial killer. Yeah, but back then that was, you know, you the were OJ just, you were gay, you Bill were Cosby. terrible. That was the worst possible thing that could you could be. What time period was this? Cause it, this is like the late, well, I, like I said, I knew about it when I was a little kid. I knew I was... Gay. But when was it like you were praying to God? Oh, from probably by the time I was twelve. Now you're a big religious guy. No, I, well, I'm. You were at the time. I was at the time because you grew up that way. You know that was you. you were well, just, that's just how yeah. society was. You went to church and. Well, my mother didn't make us. We, when we were little kids, she'd take us to church with us. But once we, just, you know, I just don't think she never made us go. You know what I mean? She was. For back then, in that time, she was very open-minded, you know? Well, um, like, back then, when, like, that was around, like, when Ford companies were starting, like, the, the stuff where we talk about, I'm not saying that's where the time period you were from, Yeah, but I'm, it probably was, too. It's, mine was... Stuff. Yeah, a little bit later, probably, yeah. but... My growing up was, like, 70s, 80s, it was the time I grew up. But grew up. Henry Ford was the first guy to give people weekends off, mm -hmm. and the reason why was because... Everyone would either work six days a week because they went to church on Sunday. You went to church. Everyone that was went the to only church. reason you had that day you know, off. Everybody was church. close together. Because it church. was Sunday. You don't. You know. You. You know. There's obviously still church on Sunday, and there's still people fault. But it's all usually the older generation. You don't mm -hmm. see kids my age going into church at the mm -hmm. age of twenty. Mm -hmm. You know, it just became a different thing. They, they can pray in their own way, either on their phones or doing something where they're looking up the Bible and script and doing a class online that way. But it's like. It was a sense of community and a sense of what everyone did. Exactly. But the notions that how it was like everyone had to follow it back then. Like if you didn't, you were looked at with torches and stuff. It's a lot like the movie The Village, you know? Yes, Where Everyone's yes. living in that like old town and there's their neighbor. And then like not even five minutes away, there's a whole society with cars and they're all living back and with horses and stuff. When mom would take us to church, I, was, I enjoyed it. You know, this like the fellowship and stuff. I really enjoyed that. Then when it... Like I said, he got older and he learned, you know, then they started the sins and uh, he was going to strike you down and all this kind of shit. That was, that got, and I'm like, oh man. There's only <laughs> one church I've been to that I actually enjoyed and that was a black church. Yeah. Oh, I like, yeah. It's just because they did a lot of like, it, it, they made it to like a family in a way, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like a lot of churches, it just seems like everyone's there and like they're all like, yeah, we're all kind of like doing the same thing, but it's like. There's a whole different aspects of different religions when it comes to like different cultures treating yeah. a, a religion one way. Like everyone looks at you know different races look at uh, Christianity in a different mm -hmm. way. You know whether it's seeing gospel or you know doing the stereotypical praying to white Jesus, praying to Korean Jesus. Yeah. You know that type of thing. Like there's a whole thing of it, and it's like it's really cool to see like. Just the different things, like, when I talk about, I used to think of, like, orchestras and mm -hmm. opera singing as a whole bunch of, Ew, like, what the hell, it's an old person stigma type thing. That was just society, what they, I learned from, like, movies and stuff. Yeah. I'd love to go see an orchestra. I actually just watched a yeah, video. I, yeah. I watched a video the other day by um, Chili Klaus. You ever heard of that mm -hmm. guy that eats all the ghost chili peppers, the really hot peppers? Oh, maybe I have heard of him. He's an orchestra instructor. Well, he had his whole orchestra eat a ghost pepper and then play their instruments <laughs> as an orchestra. They are all, like, burning at the mouth and trying to play their the instrument. And it's, like, stuff like that's, like, fun. It's, like, I want to go experience, not just, like, a, a orchestra eating a yeah. chili pepper, but, like, I want to experience, experience an orchestra. As much, yeah, they're, they're I wonderful. All I the love all kind of music. And, like, I've studied, like, religion, all different types of religion. And the one that I just... I actually think makes more sense than any of them is Buddhism. Why Buddhism? I, it just rings something with me. I the just, sense of enlightenment, like, I guess. Yeah, it's... 
we're all like Th- well that's more accepting it they that's accept reincarnation other religion stuff right? I, I do believe in a form of reincarnation so even if you died right now you come back as a prey mantis or my something. my soul or spirit would turn into something else. would be would go somewhere else until I learned until it got the until knowledge it came back around until everything that it needed I'm not necessarily in the belief of any religion, Mm -hmm. but the one thing I would like to believe is that, like, that'd be cool if reincarnation was real. Like, I I had the past life of, like, a yogi and martial artist. It sort of is, but it's, like, your spirit, like, okay, like, my spirit is what it has learned. It is learning things all the time. It is experiencing and it is learning. Now, when I die, my spirit won't die. It'll go somewhere else where it will finish learning what it needs to learn. You know, you know what I mean. That's to a lot get, of like to get to where it's going. Chinese cultures where they see their ancestors. You ever see the movie Mulan or something? Yeah. Where they light the candles and you see the the grandparents and all them floating in the spirits it's, and stuff like that. It's, it's something like that. Yeah. I mean, I've interviewed a. a uh, her name's Cheryl. She says she's a Wiccan, and she goes and I've she studied some Wiccan she, stuff. She believes in the four elements and lights candles and does Day of the Dead t- type stuff. But it's we we look at it like she's on the beach with her wand or something, and people think that's ridiculous and that's weird. No, that's just because you're used to Americanized standards of Christianity. Uh, you're not believing the whole aspect of other people's religions. If she went to somewhere that you know embrace that like India or something mm-hmm. using wands she or using something be, like that should be yeah, accepted yeah, and not looked at yeah. you know? I've had I've had but anywhere you go Scientology is bullshit <laughs> anywhere you go I think go. so too it's a little anywhere freaky you go, it's that a shit bit, is like, a little right. freaky I gotta admit but it's I've read about a lot of religions and studied you know quite a few religions and yeah. known people of different religions and just tried to try to learn it so I don't think it's you know you said, ah, a bunch of bullshit. It's not you know? Fully, yeah. Yeah. You just, you try, you just, well, that's like experiences and just getting to know somebody. Different strokes for different folks. Exactly. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's eye opening, man. It is. You came to a level with me that, like, I know you as a whole. I know, dude. As a whole better, different person. Brought like, all kind of shit out of me. See, I told you, you're good. I, I'm all right. The podcast's getting there, I guess. It's nice because it was an idea and it's turning into like, you see it grow. It's like, you know, you have a dog and it slowly starts getting older and older and older and then eventually you gotta... It's like Petey. Let him out. <laughs> let him be free. Yeah. But it's it's crazy, man. I mean, you, I knew you would have made a great dad or something, dude. You, you got the... You, you got the... You, you're my Uncle Richard always in You'll the way. So it's like... Part of my life. You know, you, you were a giant influence on me, and I'm glad you opened up to me because, you know... I'm glad you asked me to do this. When this podcast is over, I'm giving you a hug for sure, man. Oh, but yeah, please. I, I give you a hug every time I see you. Exactly, yeah. I love that. And it's like, I can always tell. I was like, well, would you a little bit influenced when you're helping, helping somebody <laughs> make furniture? I'm like, oh my God, Richard's over here. But it's it's cool, man, because you know you you, you can kick it, and I like it, man. And I, I I'll let you know I accept you for who you are. Oh, I love and you're you. You're a wonderful Always person. I love you. And I, like I said, thanks again for taking the time out of your day to even do this podcast. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. I've loved every second of it.